Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and in this video for tipsquirrel.com I'm going to make these concentric circles for that end of cartoon kind of look. Like with most of the tutorials at tipsquirrel.com this isn't about getting the finished article but about how we got there and in this video I'll be looking at a brand new feature in Photoshop CS6 that makes this effect a complete breeze. That said, if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, stick around. There's some tips in here for you too. Okay, let's get underway. And the first thing I'm going to have to do is create a new document, of course. So new. And I'm going to go 700, 772. Click OK. There we go. We're away. I want to draw a circle. Just one circle in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to find out where the center of this document is. I could go view and then new guide and create a 50% horizontal guide and then go view, new guide and 50% vertical guide. Or I could choose guide guide um, and choose these two icons here. Now, if you'd like to know more about guide guide, which is absolutely free, uh, have a look at Howard Pinsky's video a little while ago on tipsquirrel.com for more details. I shall put a link somewhere around wherever you're watching this video so you can find that. Okay, let's close that down. I know where the center of my document is now. Okay, I'm going to go and get my ellipse tool. And uh, I want it to draw from the middle about 666 pixels. So I could hold Shift and Alt and start drawing out. And of course, with CS6, you get a heads up display of showing you how big objects are. But uh, let's try and do this a bit easier, shall we? Let's find the very middle. That's so I'm going to go into the middle. Uh, as best I can with my shaky hands. Dear, come on Eric, there we go. Uh, and click once. And up comes this create ellipse box, which means I can go 666 pixels by 666 pixels. Strange number, sorry. Um, we can draw from center. It doesn't really matter in this case. Um, and then we'll click OK. And there we have our circle right in the middle. It's got a view and clear guides. Now, some of this may look familiar to you. It's looking a bit strange in CS6 though. We've got we're missing the the three icons up here. Uh, they're just in a little drop down menu now, um, and I've created a shape. I've created it in blue, so it's got a fill as blue, and we'll skip over these in just a second. And then we've got our width and our height as well. Now right here, this is our stroke, and this is new to CS6. So if I give this a bit of a stroke, let's uh, pop it into say a grey colour. There we go. We can see our stroke and it's set to 48.48 points. OK, uh, and uh, we've got a solid line. I can change that to a dashed line or a dotted line, should I wish. And these are governed by the size of our um, stroke. If I go to the dashed line, I can change the caps here from squared to circles or rounded. And I also can change the rounded caps on here to squared, should I wish. Actually, for this, I don't want to do any of that. So I'm going to keep it as a, a solid line. OK, let's close that down and go back over to here. And I'm going to take this up to, to its maximum, which is 288. You see, it doesn't quite come into the center of my circle, but that's OK. We don't need that to happen right now. So if I click on the stroke here, you can see we've got several options. One of them is pattern, no fill. And this is the one we're after today, which is our gradient. So if I click on that, you'll see that it adds a gradient to our circle. And it's going from the bottom to the top. It's following this 90 degree angle set down the bottom as a linear gradient and you may recognize this from the gradient tool um, and elsewhere in Photoshop. Now I can change the gradient just as I can anywhere else. I can bring these in and out um, and I can add stops to them as well if I wish. There's also the different types of gradients. So I've got my radial, angle, reflected and diamond. For this case I want the radial. That's where we're heading. But you notice it's going from the very center to the outside. Now you might think that this is governed by the width of the stroke, but that isn't the case. It's governed by the, the size of your, your shape. So I know that my, uh, my, my stroke here wants to be 80 points. So if I go and do that, you can see that I've just got this white here. And sure enough, it's going from the center to the outside. So I can, I've only seen this portion of the the gradient. 
let me change these colors to the ones we want before we go on any further so I'm going to just change this one and this wants to be a light red um, so again hue saturation and brightness I'm going to change to 0 96 oh excuse me 96 and 83 and click OK on that one and then this stop here wants to be the dark red double click on that one and again hue saturation and brightness of 0 97 and 28 and click OK so now we've got the reds that we're after what I can do here is I can bring this light red up and it's going to make the gradient go just between these two stops so in fact I've done this very easily and I can bring this in so it stays darker for longer um, let's bring that down just to make it a bit softer as a gradient and there we are we've basically made our first ring if I go to the fill here and choose no fill there's our first circle easy as that really let's control J to jump that control T to transform it then if I press shift and alt shift to constrain the proportions alt to transform from the middle I can bring this one in and I can stop just while it's overlapping let go looks like there's no gradient but no panic when we click the tick up it comes that's cool okay I'm going to control J control T shift and alt and then I can make my third circle good click the tick and then once more control J control T shift and alt and bring that one in as well there we go and I click the tick now you're probably noticing that these circles don't quite look right this uh, center one really doesn't so let's uh, go into this one make sure that one's highlighted and then we can change the stroke size so I'm going to bring that down to about 40 maybe that's maybe a little bit too small 50 and then I can change the gradients as well so I can make sure that the, that we bring in this light one maybe give it less dark but we need that transfer of color okay there we go that's okay for now and there we go we've got some uh, some concentric circles quite easily okay I'm going to click on ellipse one copy and so I can slip in a levels adjustment just there just so I can darken up the outside of the two outer rings and I can actually lighten the reds of those as well there we go just to give it a bit of contrast next I'm going to click on ellipse one and then shift and click on ellipse one copy three so that I can right click and convert to a smart object now we've combined all them together they're still editable of course because they're in a smart object but we've got uh, we've got more room in our layers palette we can uh, easily control them okay I want to go to filter and then blur and Gaussian blur and I want to add about 1.5 pixels you can see I've already been playing around with this and I'm going to click OK just to get rid of that uh, the, the harsh edges there and then filter noise and add noise and I'm going to go for about 2.5 percent Gaussian monochromatic just to rough it up a little bit good there we go now we're about done but I need that sort of purpley pinky glow in the middle I'm going to do that by control J and to jump that smart object I'm just going to collapse down the effects here to make it easier for us to see now because I've jumped that smart object it does mean that anything I do on one smart object will be reflected in the other so if I change the ring sizes in this copy of the smart object it would change the ring sizes in the bottom one and that's actually what we want because we want to keep it all together however if I didn't want to do that I would have gone to layer and smart objects and new smart object from copy and then it makes a brand new smart object that doesn't affect the smart object that it's been made from I hope that's all clear I'm going to double click on the blank area of the layer here just so as I can bring up my layer styles and I'm going to go in and I'm going to add an inner shadow uh, sorry an inner glow oh dear um, inner glow there we go and I'm going to choose the color that I want again hue saturation and brightness I'm going to choose 20, 295 uh, 20 and 100 and click OK we get this nice pinky purpley color and then what I want to do then is I want to bring this up to 90 percent 
and then the size up to around about 73 ish pixels and there's our glow now we have a problem we have this glow around the outside we only want it in the middle well you would think let me just click OK you'd think perhaps that uh, again I'm just collapsing that down if we add a layer mask to that get a brush paint just press B there by the way um, painting in black I could uh, mask this out but you see now that I'm not masking it out the, the inner glow has uh, has gone onto the inside of the mask okay let we can rent it rectify that if I double click again on the effects just to bring them up and I'm going to blending options default and there's a checkbox here layer mask hides effects so if I check that one there we go we've masked out the effects exactly what we want to do and now we've ended up with this nice pinky purpley glow good okay let's go and make a background very quick this one I'm going to click on the background and I'm going to fill it with this blue color um, which is if I remember rightly I'm basically trying to read my notes off to one side it's got a hue saturation of 225 80 and 40 good um, and I'm going to just alt and backspace that one to fill it with the blue then I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to choose filter render clouds and then just drop that to 10% opacity by pressing one on the keyboard okay or I can just type in 10% uh, and there we go we've just made a nice little texture there let's add a bit of noise to that add noise um, maybe one or two pixels we really don't want it to to be too much on this one at all okay let's go one and a half there we go okay we've made our background now I'm going to go and click on the ellipse one copy four because I want the next layer to be created above that I'm going to go and choose my font and my type tool and my font is Lauren script which I got from the font now there's a few scripts that work well with this one this is my choice um, and I'm just going to click down on that and you can see I'm cho I've chosen 50 points here but I think that's going to be a little bit too big we'll see okay I'm going to choose to type that's your lot actually I can't I can't think and type at the same time that's your lot good and I'm going to choose to double click on that choose why have I got the word choose in my head and then I'm going to click on the blue swatch at the top here just to change that to white okay then I'm going to select the move tool and move that into the middle okay cool okay next I want to arch that a little bit so if I control T on that you see then that I get uh, this icon here at the top switch between free transform and warp modes at the moment I'm in free transform if I click on that I'll be in warp excellent we set the warp to none let's go to arch we've got that that's a bit too much though so uh, I only want about nine in there and the horizontal at minus 58 and you see that's working well I don't want anything in the vertical but the horizontal works reasonably well that's perhaps a little bit too much let's take that way down 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 down, down. Oh, a lot further down there we go that's better and I can click the tick that still doesn't look quite right I'm going to control T again and then with this transform handle at the bottom I can just drag that down to where I like it about there click the tick we're done use the move tool just to put pop that where I want it and just to round that off if I double click on this layer here I can add a um, bevel and emboss so I'll do that at uh, about 15% depth so you may not see this on screen but it just brings it out just a little bit at 5 pixels and I'm also going to make a drop shadow this one you'll probably see a bit better a drop shadow of a distance of 8 um, and the size of, of 6 just to like I say bring it out from the background and there we go if I press F a couple of times and then control zero to make it fill the screen there we go our finished article thanks for watching you can find much more at tipsquirrel.com where we have articles and tutorials from all the photoshop nuts the site's free to view so please don't forget to like pin and tweet your thanks to all the authors there well that's all folks i'll see you next time